Hello everybody, this is Tim here at Boomstick Critique. Sorry about the um, obnoxious looking glare going on here. I had to do this video outside. But uh, I figured I'd take a little stop on my West Craven train here and do something else I recently saw. The new Godzilla film, or new were Godzilla film. I've actually seen this before, but it's been a while. The film stars Brian Cranston and Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen, and Ken Watanabe. As far as this film goes, it's probably a pretty quick review because this film is pretty easy to review. Um, pretty easy to get an insight into. Basically, it's a Godzilla film. Um, it's not. It's, it takes it tries to take itself much more seriously than like the Japanese uh, Toho films do, or at least the later Japanese Toho films, which I do think are better than this film. Uh, this film is actually a bit of a letdown to me, or actually a lot of a letdown. Really, I came close to hating the movie. The problem with this movie is that Godzilla feels like he's hardly in this movie. It just feels like he's not even there for most of the film. It's all like centered on either the humans or these mutant fucked up bug creatures or whatever. They have no, they just get way too much screen time. So you, you look, if you pay attention, I mean, if you look, even on the front of the cover, Godzilla's like got his face turned away from the, uh, from, from away, uh, from the action or whatever. So it's like, just like the movie. The problem with this movie is this movie is directed by Garth Edwards. And Garth Edwards is really famous. I mean, he well, he's well known into the movie world for doing that movie Monsters or whatever or uh, whatever the hell it was, Monster or Monsters. I forget, but that movie's famous because there are no fucking monsters in the whole movie. I mean, there's like monsters here and there, but the movie's mainly about like a a commentary about war or whatever and some shit. Um, I don't like that movie. Almost everybody I talk to doesn't like that movie, but that movie has like a little cult following after it, a cult following that movie does. I mean, that movie has a cult following. So because of that, he got the job for this. I don't know why you would hire that dude to direct this movie. I guess because he's good with special effects. Because the one thing Monsters had going for it is the special effects in it were really good. Everything else I thought was pure shit. I hate that movie. Um, <clears throat> but as far as this movie goes, it's the same problem here. It's like he, he took his style. He had Monsters, which is there's hardly any creatures ever seen. But that movie wasn't really focused on the creatures. So it didn't really hurt it too bad there. And then he just applies that to Godzilla, which is a giant monster movie with Godzilla destroying shit all the time and getting in fights with other monsters is what's supposed to be. And then you hardly see Godzilla. It's this is a totally different style of movie. He shouldn't the Godzilla shouldn't be hidden from the audience. He should be there for us to root for it and care about him. Instead, the whole movie, almost the entire movie, is focused on the the human characters who you don't give a shit about. And uh, these two mutant bugs who look cool, but after seeing them for half the movie, you're like, where the fuck is Godzilla? <laughs> but um but yeah another big problem another big problems with this movie is that the movie takes itself so seriously and like when uh, they're talking about Godzilla or whatever they even have they have Ken Watanabe I guess because he's Asian or, uh I believe he's Asian um they have him uh look at the camera like when Aaron Taylor Johnson says what what's the cre who what's this creature called and Ken Watanabe looks at the camera and goes we called him Godzilla <laughs> It's like so silly that because the movie's taking itself so seriously, it feels out of place. Like the actual U.S. government and our other government, I mean, naming this creature Godzilla or Godzilla. It just seems really out of place for such a wannabe, seriously toned movie. Another thing is Elizabeth Olsen it feels like she's barely in this movie. It's like almost blank and you miss her. But. Oh, I do find it funny, though. I know everybody points this out, but I'm going to point it out, too. That uh, that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are fucking in this movie, just like in the comic books. If you don't know what I'm talking about, obviously, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson played Quicksilver in the, in the uh, Avengers 2 movie. I can't believe I forgot it. And uh, Scarlet Witch was played by Elizabeth Olsen, and in the comic books, or at least in the, uh, the Ultimates, they're screwing each other, even though they're brother and sister. So... <laughs> So I just find it funny that they're fucking in this movie, and then they played the characters in the other movie, and that's just real humorous to me. And you, I get a laugh out of that every time I watch this movie. But uh, she feels like she's hardly in the movie, and Aaron Taylor Johnson plays like a generic military guy. Really nothing to write home about. I don't mind Aaron Taylor Johnson, but after seeing him in so much of the movie and hardly any Godzilla, and he's just like a military dude, I'm just like, get move the fuck on, man. Come on. Where's Godzilla? And then... the the biggest sin of this movie, other than the Godzilla, is Brian Cranston, who was so great in Breaking Bad before this, and he's such a great actor. I was so excited to see him in this movie. It's from the previews, they tried to make it look like he was going to be the number one character in the movie, but really it's just a gimmick to get Brian Cranston fans who like Breaking Bad to come see the movie, because he don't do jack shit in this movie. 
motherfucker is barely in it. I mean, seriously. When I watched this movie and he died so early in the movie, pretty much his wife dies in an accident at the place he works at, and you find out it was caused by these bug creatures. And his wife dies, um, which is a really sad scene. He pulls it off well, Brian Cranston does. But then just a little while later, after the bug creature hatches from its cocoon, they're called Mutos or Mutus or Mewtwo or something like that, but the bug creature hatches from its cocoon and fucks everything up, and he dies in the destruction, and I'm like, that's so fucking lame, and he's hardly in the movie. <laughs> it's so terrible, and Aaron Taylor Johnson is his son, and he pretty much takes over the movie, and Aaron Taylor Johnson doesn't, I like Aaron Taylor Johnson, like I said, but he doesn't hold a candle to the screen presence that Brian Cranston has. I can't believe they, sh they fucked him so bad in this movie. Unbelievable. But that pissed me off so bad. But other than that, this movie will piss you off. If you are a Godzilla fan like me, you will be pissed off watching this at most moments. Like, fucking, it, it ain't just that Godzilla's not in most of the movie. It's that when he shows up and he's getting ready to, you're like, thank God he's here. And he's fighting, you're ready to fight the big bug creatures. And you're like, yeah, action. The movie will deliberately get them ready to fight and they're getting ready to fight each other. And uh, then it's just, it'll cut away and you won't see it. It deliberately does it on purpose. I know the director's trying to do it to build up, trying to do this to build up anticipation. It's like a film trick or whatever. Try to get you more excited for when they actually do fight, but he does it multiple fucking times, nonstop, man, until the point where my eyes were about to bleed and I could feel rage inside me. I was going to turn to the Hulk and strangle Garth Edwards with a fucking John Zilla rubber doll because this is just painstaking. I, I'll just go ahead and give my rating. I'll give this movie three stars. Three stars. It, I would give it zero. I would. But the final act of this movie redeems it somewhat. When you get to the final, it finally becomes a Godzilla movie. Finally. At the end, Godzilla opens up a can of whoop ass on the bug creatures. But still, there's two bug creatures and they gang up on him. And they just take him down a little bit too easy. I find that Godzilla gets took down too easy in this movie when he's fighting the creatures. I mean, he's like this big ass creature i mean godzilla is and so sorry about that dog was behind me i had to see what it was but yeah godzilla's like this big ass dinosaur man he has these steel plates on his back and shit and i'm just thinking this little this giant bug creature is just like jumping on his back and that's somehow hurting him and another thing they hold off on showing you godzilla's atomic breath and it just pops up in the movie for no reason you're supposed to accept it because you know godzilla has atomic fire breath like, but there's plenty of times he could have used it and beat the bug creatures in, like, two seconds. Like, when the one's jumping him in from behind in the back and the other one's attacking him in the front, why does he just blow the fucking fire and blow its head off? And the one in the front, he could take it out right then and there and then kill the one behind him. He could just do it right there. But they deliberately hold off on it, the director does. And when it happens, you're like, well, if you didn't know nothing about Godzilla, you'd be like, how the fuck does he blow fire? It's just like, they just they automatically expect you to know about Godzilla. So you just automatically go, well, shit. But when he blows the fire, though, it looks really awesome. The special effect does. I loved it. And at the end, when Godzilla fucks up this creature, it's really cool. He, like, grabs it and pulls its mouth open like that and breathes the fire down through its throat and blows its damn head up. Well, blows it up from the inside. That was awesome. And at the end, uh, when you find out that, uh, when, when you see Godzilla, like, walk off into the water like he's a badass and then the movie ends, that's great. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson at the end has to, like, defuse some nuclear bomb or something. You're like, who gives a fuck? Uh, because all the military guys, you know, they're all going to die pretty much except for Aaron Taylor Johnson. So you're like, why do I give a fuck? Why? Why? The whole movie should be just focused. For some reason, American like filmmakers feel the need to try to make the human characters interesting in these movies. Anybody give a fuck about the human characters in the Japanese you know, Godzilla films, the Toho films? I mean, not really. <laughs> Maybe one or two movies, but 90% of them, no. So I'm like, why do the, they think Americans need to care about these characters there's no reason i really don't see why american directors try to do this i don't know i mean does anybody give a shit about shia labeouf and transformers does anybody even like those movies <laughs> i doubt it <laughs> but anyway yeah i'm just like why well, try to focus so much on the humans give me more godzilla i know a sequel to this is coming out and i'm pretty sure they've learned from their mistakes and i guarantee in the sequel we'll get more godzilla but pretty much i give this movie three stars for a good final battle if it wasn't been for that this movie would be utter dog shit. But, uh, because it, the, the monsters I didn't like because I just thought it sucked. This movie pisses me off. This movie goes out of its way to piss you off. 
and but the ending redeems it with the cool battle with the creatures at the end and the atomic fire breath that Godzilla uses. That is cool. It redeems itself right there. And the director does have a good eye for style because there's a lot of cool shots and Godzilla looks cool. It's more like the Japanese version than the dinosaur Jurassic Park wannabe version from the Matthew Broderick movie. But he, he looks more like the Japanese version. And uh, the director has a good eye for style because there's like badass scenes where Godzilla's like standing in the, the smoke or whatever when you first see him. And he yells and like, you know, it's humongous and <laughs> it's a call to be heard around the world. You get a great to like big ass tidal wave in the movie and a really cool special effects shot. But yeah, the director has a great eye for style, but he's like, he always goes for this like really, really less is more, but it doesn't work for a monster movie because you want to see the monsters. I don't want to see kick ass. I want to see the monster. So it's like, what? Stupid shit. But, but yeah, the final of the movie redeems it. It picks the movie up. It doesn't save it, but it does pick it up. So yeah, all in all, I'd give it three stars. Not Honestly, I would recommend just watching the, the final fight on YouTube or something, really. But yeah, other than that, for the movie itself, though, having degraded, I'd give it three stars because the final act of the movie redeems it when you finally get to the Godzilla action and the monster action. Um, yeah, so I'd give it three stars out of four. It's a it's a a good like disaster movie with a, a a I mean it's a passable disaster movie with a good final fight, but it's not a very good Godzilla movie except to the end. So yeah, all in all, three stars. And I'll see you guys again with my shocker review.